It's always something. I ain't even gonna lie. You look like you can pick me up. I've been staring at you. You look real strong. I ain't that strong. <laughs> <laughs> If there's anything I've learned in life, it's that there's always a reason to be unhappy. We get the guy, but we don't get the ring. We get the ring, but then we don't have enough money for the house. We get the house, but then we don't have the renovated kitchen. We get the kitchen, but then our neighbors show us their bigger kitchen, so we move to a bigger house with a bigger kitchen. Now we have the bigger kitchen, but we have less time because we're too busy slaving away at jobs we hate to afford the bigger kitchen, so we take time off from work. But then we worry about keeping the kitchen, so we go back to work and then worry about the promotion that someone else got while we were taking time off from work. And then we get the promotion, but then we have even less time to enjoy our freaking kitchen and I don't know where this kitchen analogy came from but all of this is just to say that more is not always more and if you're looking for a reason to feel like you're not enough or you don't have enough you will always find it never forget that there was a version of you in your past who would have been proud to know you're living the life you have now even if you don't have as much as some random person on the internet or the woman next door who probably never sees her husband anyways because he's too busy working to pay for the kitchen I hope you remember that there are just as many if not more reasons to be happy if you would only stop looking for joy in everyone else's life other than yours and most of all, I hope you know that you can't hold on to the gift of the present if you're always chasing what the future could hold. Alright, this chick's a little insufferable. I don't think I can really stand her, but uh, yeah, man, this is it right here. This is why it ain't really worth taking them on because she's one of the few that probably read a paragraph on the internet and figured it out, but the other ones, you could fucking sit them down and tell them about the whole thing and they'll never get it and it'll always be a problem. So, man, think about who you're taking on. In, the, in this day and age, I think the feminist movement screwed their mind up so bad that it's probably like, I don't know, like a 5% chance you get one that had their head screwed on straight. Girls have the sassy list. This is the masculine list part two. So if you do this, ladies, you're masculine. Girls that have a shoe size 10 or higher, masculine. Driving a manual car, masculine. What are you, Paul Walker? Talking loud in public, masculine. If you have chest tattoos, masculine. Drinking liquor straight out the bottle. What are you, fucking Captain Jack Sparrow? Masculine. If you have hair above your lip, masculine. Why do you have a mustache? If you hawk loogies, masculine. You're a dragon. If you sell drugs, masculine. If you shoot guns or and work a security job you're aggressive masculine if you build things bob the builder masculine if you open drinks or food with your teeth masculine you're a grizzly bear settle down comment add to the list doesn't make any sense my visitations are at a mall that i can't even go to for three years because he stole our businesses and had me banned from the mall the judge knows that i'm going to be homeless in a two weeks roughly okay i'm going to be homeless and I have nowhere to go because they won't give me my money. Nobody will help. I had to do all of this without a lawyer. And I was treated like garbage. Like garbage. The whole fucking time. And now I'm divorced. I'm going to be starving even further. He didn't even have to follow court orders. When they flip the script in family court and a woman gets screwed, she's singing the same song. You mean to tell me black women are out here sleeping with black men that they don't respect, they don't listen to, they don't think it's worthy, they don't think it's a manly man. Get you sleeping with him? He ain't all these things but you. White girls are doing it too. Make it make sense. You're crazy, you're crazy. Okay, look, I didn't pick me, okay? I was born with me. You, you chose me, you're crazy. Why would you choose crazy? I didn't choose crazy. I was born with it. So a woman will do something she regrets. She'll go out and get drunk and sleep with a guy. She regrets it because she knows it's wrong. Ten years later, she will tell the world she was abused. She was tricked. Truthfully, it was her own decision. Females demand to be sovereign, to reject the guidance of their fathers, reject the guidance of their partners, reject the guidance of their uncles and the men who love them and care for them. And they want to do anything they want. Yet when they regret their own actions, it's always some other man's fault. You can't have both. I believe women are intelligent enough to make their own decisions. But to sit and say, we reject all guidance, yet we are easily tricked endlessly. It is a logic fail. Yeah, I saw some of you guys hating on Tate in the comments, but this guy's pretty well thought through. I've had this exact same thing happen before with me. Uh, I, I married a chick from Saudi Arabia, so she went against her whole family's wishes and all the guys in her family by marrying a guy in America. And then when she acted like shit, she'd always try to pretend like she was the victim. So that's how they do it, man. It's a, it's a blueprint. They all got the book. When was the last time that you had a period? I don't you don't remember okay 
There um, could be a slight chance I might be pregnant. You're fucking mm-hmm. right. Really? And why do you say that? I've been craving weird things that I'm not... Normally craving? Yeah. And now you crave it. Hmm. Like water. Well, some of it I'm could craving be... craving water. <laughs> Bitch, you ain't pregnant, you're thirsty. You're just thirsty, bitch. Go drink you some water. It'll be all right. <laughs> all right, here we go. Thousand pound sisters, right? See, this is where the women got us up. They're they're one up on us because guys actually would screw these two. Like, what on earth? Like, what at what stage of your life would you be so down bad that you'd rather do this chick than your hand? Honest to God. But that's what it is, man. As long as these chicks got choices, man, they got the upper hand. We got to fix it. What's the hardest part about dating right now? Everybody hoes. Everybody hoes, including me. Disgrace! So, I heard you were feeling a little down today, and I have a list of 70 things that can cheer you up. Number one is a hug, and the other is 69. (laughs) I couldn't have said it better myself. The vagina is the greatest engine on the whole planet. You can start it with one finger, it's self-lubricating, takes any size piston, and it changes its own oil every four weeks. (laughs) My free game of the day is this. If she is watching you struggle, bro, she don't fuck with you. Let me repeat this. If she is able to watch you struggle, bro, she does not fuck with you. A grown ass woman is going to say, hey, baby, you know what? I see you got a lot on your plate this month. Let me go ahead and chip in. If your wife, if your girlfriend, if your side chick or whatever it is you call yourself having feelings for can sit back and watch you always have to go through hell and hot water to figure it out. She does not fuck with you because guess what? People that love you, people that deal with you, it irritates their soul to watch you struggle. It bothers them. They're not comfortable with seeing you struggle because they have that much love for you. A lot of these women will sit back and know damn right you in way over your head. And instead of all offering solutions, she sit back and secretly watches how the fuck you're going to figure it out. That is not a partner. That is not a friend. That is not a homie. That is not a companion. It is none of the above. She is a fucking leech and she's just literally sucking all the life out of you. And when the funds run out, so will the friendship. I am true first. Yeah, I like this guy. He's got a real point here, you know. I've always said life is about reading between the lines, you know. No one's ever going to give it to you straight. And uh, you know, you got to look you got to look for these red flags and in my past, man, sometimes there'd be a sh- like, you know, it take you after like a breakup after about a year, you'd look back and say, "God damn, how the fuck didn't I see a single one of these red flags, right?" So, man, it's important to identify uh the red flags from your past relationships and try to figure out if you're seeing them again. Disrespect, lack of accountability, being uncoachable, those are the things that are serious. When I see those, it's a, it's not going to work. 55? Come on, man. You got more in you. 56. Come on. Don't you want me to go to church? Oh, yeah. I'll talk to your heavenly father. <laughs> you want to go? All the way. You're stupid. But you there. Prove it. Ask him to give you the strength to beat me. Now. More. Don't give up. More. Come on, you got it. More. More. Yeah. Give me your freebies right now. More. Yes, uh, I'm not going to church. Give me a stronger Mormon. This guy cannot go to hell. Ew. It's totally acceptable if your wife says she is not in the mood, she has a headache, and then she goes to sleep. The next time y'all hear a strange noise in the middle of the night that needs to be checked out, tell her that you have a headache, you are not in the mood, and then you go back to sleep. Have you ever laid into it full throttle from behind and have your thumb plugged in the boost button? 
Then once you slow down a little, you release the thumb and the turbo blows off and starts leaking a little bit of oil. Undetermined on what to do next, you just keep going but smell of burnt oil is starting to make your eyes water. And you begin to cough. So you pull over to get a rag to wipe all the oil off the turbski. But the oil is only smearing all over the place, making it a total mess. After getting all the oil cleaned up, you start raw dogging the hell out of it again, but kept your thumb out of the boost hole. Sounds like it's time to give it a shot of nitrous. Hi. I'm looking for a white lady that's tattooed and dominant and be willing to put me in a dress and beat the shit out of me. He needs some milk. Hey, right, so what's the craziest thing you guys would do for the Dolphins to win a Super Bowl this season? Uh, the whole team, baby! Woo! Yup, get a little liquor at her. She ain't lying. All right, y'all. Let's see what I got for you today. All right, we're out here on the yard. I had a customer that ordered tags. I had no, you know, we didn't have to print on them, so I could show you. It's going to be a take your audience to work day. So here it is, man. This is all the ghost wood. These are XL pieces. Those blue ones are smalls. Get them all lined up. They look pretty awesome. I'm about to put a 48 by 48 pallet because that one's gonna be too small. Got grapevine pieces. So these are XL grapevine. It's all said and done. The pallet will be probably about this one, about seven or eight feet tall. I have to get all these tags on other pieces of wood and then his order is done so this is about half of it so uh i'll come back i'll show you guys what it's like when it's built um you know we get the different wood out of the desert we sandblast it over here then we ship it nationwide on pallets this pallet costs about four thousand dollars all right guys i'll uh i'll come back and show you what the pallet looks like when it's built probably tomorrow all right Remember those super nice days I was telling you guys out about out here in San Diego? Out here in the country. Whole bunch of wood. Sulaire power. I like Sulaire. Look at it over there. Sunny as could be. It's April about, probably April 8th or April 10th. That's what it looks like before we finish it. That's Choya. It's like a cactus. That's a piece of grapevine. That's a, you know, a piece of manzanita. That's what it's like when it's finished. Like the stuff over by the pallet. It's like a big ass operation. We have to use the helmet. It's like you put the helmet on and you go in there. In there. Hi y'all, there it is, eight foot tall, gonna be going to New Jersey. Man, that was like all the wood I showed you in the beginning and probably twice as much. It's crazy, it all fits together like a puzzle, a Jenga puzzle in there. It doesn't even really need any straps, it'll hold itself up. I do gotta put three more straps on it though, just because. Man, that's a wild business, guys. I don't know how it happened, you know, it's just, uh, Crazy how opportunities arise. Who would have thought I'd ever be selling sandblasted wood all over the nation? They really like this product. They like double or triple their money on it. I never lose a customer. We're doing like a thousand dollars a day right now, probably. There's my diesel car over there. That's a diesel Audi A6. I recommend that to anyone that might want to buy one. That thing's great. It's like 40 miles to the gallon. Get the get the 3.0 engine though. All right, guys. I always appreciate you guys tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe. We're going to see you on the next one.